What is cloud computing? This is a question that many people ask because we hear the term all the time in the IT industry and beyond. But what is it? What does it comprise of? Why is it so prevalent and key to business development? Before we start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Stuart Scott. I'm one of the trainers here at Cloud Academy, specializing in AWS, Amazon Web Services. The phrase cloud computing has been used heavily within the IT industry for many years now, and more recently it's been used within other sectors such as retail and finance as it becomes increasingly popular. Many people often refer to the technology simply as the cloud. Cloud computing is a rapidly growing technology and the adoption of this is a key strategy for many organizations and there is a very good reason behind this. It's changing the landscape of how many companies operate on a huge scale with significant business and technical advantages and benefits that can't be ignored. The growth of cloud computing has been exponential over the past few years, so what is it? Put simply, cloud computing is a remote virtual pool of on-demand shared resources offering compute, storage, database and network services that can be rapidly deployed at scale. Now there may be a couple of terms within this definition that are new to you or not too clear, such as virtual or compute. Don't worry, I'm going to break these down over the next couple of slides, after which I shall give you this definition again and you should be able to fully understand this concept. Before fully understanding cloud computing, we must be aware of some existing technology that it's based upon, that being virtualization. And this has been used in on-premise data centers for a long time. But this virtualization maximizes the power of cloud computing and without this virtualization, it would just not be possible. So what is virtualization? In essence, it allows the possibility of having multiple virtual machines, VMs, each running essentially a separate operating system and applications, all installed on one physical server. These VMs all run at the same time without being aware of each other's existence while sharing the underlying hardware resources. This sharing of hardware resources is a key element of understanding virtualization and is achieved through a hypervisor. A hypervisor is a piece of software used to create the virtualized environment, allowing for multiple VMs to be installed on the same host. When installed, the hypervisor sits logically between the physical server hardware and the virtual machines and creates a shared pool of virtual hardware resources for each of them to access. All VMs installed on the host see the hardware as they normally would. However, any request to the hardware goes via the hypervisor, which then handles the access, ensuring the hardware resources are shared between all other VMs as needed and as configured. A VM within the public cloud is sometimes referred to as an instance. This term is very vendor specific, but it refers to the same object as a virtual machine. When discussing resources within cloud computing, it won't be long before you come across the terms such as compute, storage, database, and network resources. Increasingly, you may also hear other terms such as machine learning or artificial intelligence. It's a good idea to have a clear distinction between compute, storage, database, and network, and what each of these refer to, as that will certainly help you going forward when identifying what services you want to move to the cloud should you decide to do so. Compute objects provide the brains to process your workload including what's required to process and run requests from applications and services. As a comparison, if you think of hardware devices with CPUs and RAM, typically servers, and how they work in a classic on-premises environment, compute resources in the cloud are comparable to these. Storage resources simply allow you to save and store your data. Any resource that allows you to save your data in the cloud is classed as a storage resource. Again, as a comparison, in a typical environment, these would be seen as your server hard disks or your network attached storage, which provides file level shared storage over the network, or your high speed storage area network, your SAN, which is block level storage accessed over a high speed network. Database resources allow you to store structured sets of data used by your applications. Again, as a comparison, Databases are widely used in data centers with some common database engine types being SQL Server, Oracle, and MySQL. Within the cloud, there are a wide variety of database engines available for different use cases. Network resources provide the connectivity allowing all other resources, compute storage and database, to communicate with each other. 
In a typical environment, you would find hardware such as routers to route traffic between network switches, which provide the backbone of network connectivity, allowing hosts to talk to one another, and firewalls to allow or deny traffic into the environment. So now if we go back to our definition of cloud computing given earlier of, cloud computing is a remote virtual pool of on-demand shared resources offering compute, storage, database and network services that can be rapidly deployed at scale. You should now have a clearer understanding of what this actually means. The red section refers back to the virtualization and the blue section refers to the typical resource types available within cloud computing that we just discussed. Typically within cloud computing, there are three different cloud model types, each offering different levels of management, flexibility, security, and resilience. And these are public, private, and hybrid. Let's start with the public cloud. A public cloud model is where a vendor makes available the use of shared infrastructure, including, but not limited to, compute, storage, database, and network resources that can be provisioned on demand and typically accessed over the internet for public usage. The consumer will never see the hardware used, nor know the exact physical location of their data, but they will be able to specify the geographic region in which it resides to aid with data latency depending on where your end users are located. It makes sense from a design perspective to host your infrastructure as close to the geographical region as your customers or end users are, as this will provide the best overall performance for them. All back-end maintenance of the physical location services, such as power, calling, etc., along with the physical maintenance of hosts, such as hardware failures, will be maintained by the cloud vendor and seemingly invisible to the end user. As a general rule, you can access your services on the public cloud from anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. A private cloud is different to a public cloud in that the infrastructure is privately hosted, managed and owned by the individual company using it, giving greater and more direct control of its data. Enterprises who wish to keep a tighter grasp of security control may adopt this architecture. As a result, the hardware is usually held on-premise. How this differs from a typical on-premise server farm approach is that the same cloud principles are applied to the design, such as the use of virtualization, creating a pool of shared compute, storage and network resources, making use of scalability and on-demand provisioning. With this approach, more capital expenditure is required to acquire the host and the data center that they will physically reside in. Not only this, additional resource will be needed for the day-to-day -day operations and maintenance of this equipment and so your daily operational cost will also increase compared to that of a public cloud model. As you may have already guessed, a hybrid cloud is a model that makes use of both public and private clouds. This model may be used for seasonal burst traffic or for disaster recovery. A hybrid model is established when a network link is configured between the private cloud to services within the public cloud, essentially extending the logical internal network of the private cloud. This makes the benefits given from both the public and private models and allows you to architect your services in the most appropriate model. However, be aware that they also contain the same negatives from both solutions too. Hybrid clouds are normally short-term configurations, maybe for test and dev purposes, and can often be a transitional state for enterprises before moving a service to reside purely in the public cloud. So now you have an idea of the different cloud types that there are, public, private, and hybrid, you will need to know which service model you would like to deploy within it. There are many different service models available and more are being defined all the time. Although three of the most common are that of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Each service offering provides a different level of manageability and customization of your solution. Cloud computing has a number of key characteristics that allow it to be the powerful service that it is today and it's a good idea to have an understanding and awareness of these and what they offer. On-demand resourcing. This essentially means that when you want to provision a resource within the cloud, it's almost immediately available to you to allocate where and when you need it. No more waiting around for hardware to be ordered, installed, cabled and configured before using it. Scalability. Cloud computing offers you the ability to rapidly scale your environment's resources both up and down and in and out, depending on your requirements and demands of your application and services. When scaling up and down, you effectively alter the power and performance of an instance, perhaps using one with a greater CPU or memory power. When scaling in and out, 
you are simply adding or removing the number of instances you're using to your fleet of compute resources. This offers a significant advantage compared to on-premise solutions from a cost perspective alone. Economy of scale. Due to the huge scale of resources public cloud offerings provide, which are optimized and shared between different organizations, thanks to virtualization technology, you as the end user benefit from exceptionally low resource costs compared to traditional hosting. Flexibility and elasticity. Cloud computing offers huge flexibility and elasticity to your design approach. You can choose to have as many or as few resources as you require. You decide how much and how long you want it for and at what scale. The amount of choice you have allows you to fully customize exactly how you want and need your environment, using only the resources required. Growth. Cloud computing offers your organization the ability to grow using a wide range of resources and services. Couple this with the on-demand element and your growth constraints are significantly reduced compared to a classic on-premises environment. This growth also includes the ability to reach global customers with ease by provisioning resources across the cloud vendor's global network. Utility-based metering. With many cloud services, you only pay for what you use. What do I mean by this? If you only have an instance running for two hours and then shut it down, then you only pay for two hours worth of compute resources and that's it. Think of it like this. In your house, you only pay for your electricity when you use it, and to help keep costs down, you turn off the lights when you're not using them. So it's the same billing process for many resources and services. You only pay for resources when you are using them. Shared infrastructure. As discussed previously during the virtualization section, hosts within the cloud are virtualized. As a result, multiple tenants can be running instances on the same piece of hardware. This significantly reduces the amount of physical hardware required, which in turn reduces the amount of power, calling and space required in the data center, and in turn helps with the economy of scale, all resulting in cheaper cost to you as the customer. Highly available. By design, many of the core services within the public cloud and its underlying infrastructure are replicated across different geographic zones and regions. Having data copied to multiple different places automatically helps you to ensure the durability and availability of your data and services without even having to configure an architect for this resilience. It's provided by the vendor as a part of their service. Security. This is one of the most discussed topics within cloud computing, and many enterprises still have concerns over how secure it is. However, public cloud vendors such as AWS and Microsoft Azure are considered to be more secure than your own data center. This is down to the fact that they have to adhere to global compliance programs across multiple industries and by applying the shared responsibility model. The vendor will operate to an exceptionally high standard of security for the underlying infrastructure of the cloud. And it's down to you, the end user, to then architect security in the cloud using the tools, services and applications available. For more information on the shared responsibility model for Amazon Web Services, please take a look at our existing blog here. These are just some of the key characteristics of cloud computing, and you can see how differently it operates from your traditional on-premise data center deployments that you may be using today. Now we have a clear understanding of what is required, let's get started with the training.